Damn, Luke, your corners are tight as fuck. That's one thing I hear quite often because my corners are tight as fuck. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated by finishing drywall corners, but I'm going to show you some tricks to do it, uh, uh, do it right. Do it quick. Do it cheap. So that you can do it too. Uh, Frederick Douglass described that corners where two walls come together. Uh, well, really, this is the this is the corner where we're going to finish it. Uh, they sell all kinds of nonsense. They sell like uh, true corners, got like metal in it, like web. They sell a plethora of bullshit that uh, you can buy, but don't buy any of that stuff. What you want really is just this uh, two fifty, two fifty, two dollar fifty cents. You can do this whole house with this tape here. This tape is uh, it's made of paper, it comes from trees, and it's got a little crease in it, so it gives you this perfect little fold here. What's that? That's also a corner. So it fits right there in the little shibits right there. Uh, when I was in training, I was taught that uh, there's three steps to uh, doing drywall. There's the tape coat, tape, uh, the fill or block coat, depending on which part of the country you're in and then the finish coat. Uh, no, I'm doing a whole new system. My system is two days. You want to spend three days going back and forth to a customer's house? That's dumb. I have eliminated 33.34% of the time it takes to do drywall. Two days. Two days, bitch. You're in and out. Again, none of that other nonsense. None of that whatever shit they're selling. Cheap paper tape. You'll need all kinds of other crap. Just a, I use a six inch and a four inch knife. All right, I'm bringing you real close here just to show you this, okay? So if you see where that tape is, how that'll fit in there, dry, I'm putting a little mark here, a little marky mark, a little marky mark. So what I'm saying is when you, I'm showing you that to demonstrate you need mud. If that's where the end of the tape is, you need mud out there and mud about there in order to get enough for the paper to stick. Because if you don't have enough mud fully behind it, you're going to get little bubbles. And bubbles equals troubles. Before I apply any mud, I make sure I have the correct length of paper tape. You'll see a lot of guys like adding water and like stirring it up and doing all kinds of not. I'm doing that shit. Take the bucket as it is. Make sure you get the lid back on all the way when you're done so it doesn't dry out. You don't need it. I mean, whatever, dude. Hop in the comment section and tell me I'm doing it wrong or that this is internet misinformation. I don't give a shit. I'm just saying you'll need to do all that stuff. Uh, take my six inch knife. And uh, I'm not just, I don't just whip it back and forth like this so I look like a some kind of chef at a Benihana. I'm actually, you're getting the air bubbles out. Like I said, you can stir it up if you want to, but I'm not stirring and restoring, stirring a whole bucket. It's important to be sure to keep both sides your knives clean, because if little hunks and chunks of nonsense go in the back, it looks dirty, but I'm clean where it counts, and that's on the front edge, because if you get some on the back, it's gonna leave little turds in your mud there. Um, but as I'm going in the corner, this is about spatial awareness, folks. I'm going to be going on the left corner, so I'm going to use that side right there. And I'm going to start with just about that much. I have just a teeny amount to demonstrate to you. Again, I'm on that edge right there. What? Have you buttered bread before? Have you made cupcakes for a party and you had to ice them up nice and pretty? That's all we're doing. And this bit here doesn't need to be pretty. Now I'm going to the other side. So guess which side I use? Yep, you guessed right. If you can remember back to about 30 seconds ago when I showed you where the pencil lines are, you can tell how much mud you're going to need. So I really only need about that much mud, so I'm going to take some of this guy here. Don't need you. And then run it down my wall. But it's whatever you want to do. You want to start at the top? You want to start at the bottom? 
Express yourself. Go crazy. Drywall's about fun. What I'm doing here, that's me against the wall. I'm just leaving about an eighth an inch. As previously demonstrated, you're going to take your paper tape. I prefer a nicer edge on there and follow the crease. Make sure you're in the little crease. You don't want two creases. Pal, you're in business. I'm using just my six inch knife. Go ahead and get that bullshit right in the corner there. Don't go bananas. Get the whole thing in there. You're not feathering anything, you're just pressing her on in there. The corner of the paper is in the corner of the wall. And you're pressing it to make sure that's fully seated in the joint compound behind it. And if I were to continue to listen to that jackass senior Herman Peltier, who uh, taught me how to mud and tape, that would be the tape coat. I would leave it and come back tomorrow. But I'm no longer in uh, the service of our government and I need to make money. So I try to get us erase an entire day from the project. So uh, let me show you, once you get this corner done, uh, don't go by, they sell corner trowels and all kinds of horse shit. Again, this is all you need. Paper tape, this, just what you do uh, is you just do one corner at a time. Let it dry, come back. I'll show you what I mean. Again, just that part of the knife. What I'm aiming for is you have, a, you have a slight, this is the wall, imagine it just barely like that, okay? So that way, I'm leaving about an eighth to zero in that six inch span. The, the joint compound is going to shrink a little bit when it dries. So I want to make sure when it dries, it stays over the tape. What matters above all else is from the corner where the paper meets uh, that you have about an eighth an inch covering the paper and this line right here is tight. You might have a little bit of stupidness on the opposing wall, but that's not a big deal. Okay, this one I did yesterday for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, I'm gonna show you that this side is nice and dry. This side, I can still see the paper tape. I'm going to sand this in real time, just so you can see. And they sell all kinds of stuff. They sell uh, pole sanders, whatever. Some people use palm sanders. Just use a sponge, dude. Just a simple, humble, $4 drywall sponge. I'll do this whole goddamn house with this one $4 sponge here. Let me put on my mask of tyranny here. Um, also, when you're sanding, you're not sanding it off. You're shaping it. You're taking off the little chunks and chips and you don't want to expose that paper you're going to let it just right on in the corner there just ever so slightly So now you just bring it on home. Uh, it's the opposite. I don't know if it's the opposite or the mirror process. 
whatever, you get it. Um, so I'm just going to be coming down here because this side is nice and dry. I can just ride my blade right along it, feathering out where this paper is here. and such don't worry about it but as long as the first little three quarters to half inch to the corner is perfect good then you're gonna find yourself the corner with both sides dry one side sanded one side not I go through and just scrape off little turds that hit on the, the side I did first and then and then Lightly sand it out. That's it. That's it. And you're done. I would take that. That's two steps. Two days. No three day nonsense. Put some primer on it. See what it looks like. Again, once you got it, all you got to do is you just got to master that little wrist butter action. Take your time. First go like practice on it, but it's once you get that, but again you get your first side set up, ride it down on that uh, dry side, pow. Corners will be tight. You're welcome.